Hi, in this short video I'd like to introduce the design checker utility for Autodesk Inventor, uh, demonstrate how it's configured, and then show you how it works in an actual design. To locate the design checker app, you actually have to click on this little exchange app, which is sort of like the app store for Autodesk products. And then it takes you to a website and then from there you can peruse all sorts of different apps. There's lots of useful utilities that people have programmed and built for Inventor and AutoCAD and really lots of Autodesk products that can really make life more simple. So one thing I tell people in my classes are if you've ever run into a situation where you think, boy, I wish Inventor did X, Y, or Z, take a look into the App Store and see if you can find something. Uh, because there's probably a good chance that somebody else has thought that and developed some sort of a routine for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in Design Checker. <clears throat> and here's Design Checker, which was released by Autodesk. So we'll click on that one really quickly. And so it's a subscription level benefit. So if you're on a current Autodesk subscription, you should have no trouble pulling that down. And so then you'd go ahead and download the file from there. So that's how you get Design Checker. So what does Design Checker actually do? So let me come back into Inventor and I'll just kind of give you an overview and then I have a couple of simple examples. So once you install the Design Checker and relaunch Inventor, you'll actually have this Design Checker tab. And so a couple of things that you want to note about it is you can uh, set it up to run automatically and you can also tell it which profiles you're using. So what is it actually going to check against? So I'm going to, I have turned on live checking, which I'll show you. And you can also see here is the default profile XML file that it's using to keep track of everything that we want to check against. To actually configure that profile and set up your design checks, you actually click on this tool here for the configuring profiles. And what it does is it brings up a dialog box. So there's a lot in here that you can look at. You can decide to check parts, drawings, assemblies, and then there's a properties field. And as you can see here, each set of values <clears throat> requires, uh, or each, each category of componentry gives you different options. So I'm going to focus primarily on the parts for this short demonstration, but there are other areas as well. And then at the end, we'll also take a look at maybe some properties. So if we look at the parts, right now I've got <clears throat> a modeling tab. I've got a custom tab. This is if you want to build your own iLogic rules to check different things, you can do that. And then there's a machining area. The groups are pretty much for deciding which checks fit into which groups. So I'm pretty much just using the default options. One is a machining, which we'll take a look at and the other one is related to modeling. And so if we just take a quick gander at the modeling tab, we can see that there are just several things that perhaps we would like to keep track of. Uh, for example, are there any suppressed features? That could mean that something was being edited, you're doing some uh, quality control on your model and you forgot to unsuppress something. Um, adaptive features. So again, adaptivity is a great tool within an assembly but then once you're done with the adaptive part or your conceptual design, you may want to turn adaptivity off to make sure that your designs uh, are more stable in the sense that they don't change and they can load and react faster because you're not doing additional calculating. So you can see there's all sorts of different things that you can check. Um, I'm also checking the eye properties using the default properties setting here, so part number, description, and cost. If we jump over to the machining tab, this is where we can check for different uh, sets of information, uh, particularly related to like holes and hole features and things like that. So for example, they've got a maximum hole depth ratio of five to one. That means if I have uh, a quarter inch hole and I try drilling that two inches deep, they may throw an error message saying, well, be careful, that bit size for the depth of the hole you're drilling may cause some trouble. So just, it's not necessarily always that it can't be done. It's just warning you of particular things. 
So that's one. Another one I'm going to demonstrate is an inaccessible hole. So if you ever have a part where you've drilled a hole in the middle of it, uh, then there are three tabs like in this little image. Yeah, that's going to be kind of a tricky deal. So again, not saying that these things are impossible, but they are things that we would want to be careful about. So I'm going to go ahead and add a default property here um, just to show you what this is like. So if I add a property, I can choose which property I want to add. So it mimics the eye properties behind the scenes. And in this case, uh, I'm going to substitute in a vendor for cost. I want to make sure that we have a vendor field and the cost is something maybe we control in an ERP system or something outside. So I go ahead and click OK. Now you see that it's switched to vendor and I can hit save. So again, there's more you can explore here. I'm just trying to give you a brief overview. Uh, go ahead and I'll exit out of this tool and now let's launch a part. So if I click on a part I've already made just in the interest of time, we'll see that this part shows up and there are automatically problems. And so you get this little dial set of dial indicators up here based on the different categories that you've selected and I've got one machining problem and I've got three modeling issues. So another thing that you can do when you've got the design checkers, there's actually an extra little um, browser <coughs> partition that you can look at. And so if I filter over to the design checker results, I can look at all of the failures that are occurring. So right now we've got a whole uh, accessibility issue and I'm missing some required properties. So let's just go ahead and again I'm using live checker so I'll show you how this works in a model. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my hole and I'm going to fix an issue. So right now it's telling me that because I'm drilling from this surface just down to the bottom it's got an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and say through all and now that would push that through the bottom shelf as well. So I click OK and I still have a problem. Notice my dial didn't change. So what's happened is if I look at the machining folder, now I've got that depth to diameter ratio issue where my quarter inch hole dropping down this two inches or whatever it is violates my five to one maximum. So you don't have to fix it. It's not like I can't save this part and send it off, but that's what it's reporting. If I look at the past value now, I can look here and my hole accessibility now is no longer an issue. So it also highlights what has been fixed or what's working. So I'm going to jump back into the hole and I'm going to make yet another change. I'm going to actually slide this bar over just a little bit and I'm going to change my diameter from 0.25 to 0.5. Now this, I know this may not be the proper fix you know, in a true design sense, but I just want to show you how that would work in Design Checker. And so if I click OK, now that ratio is increased and now my little slider bar, or my indicator shows me that it's working. I now no longer have any failed modeling and it actually shows up the whole engagement or max, I forget what it's called, the max thing. Yeah, depth, here we go, depth or di diameter ratio has been satisfied. So again, pretty easy to use tool. I'm going to go ahead and come in here to the test part. I'm going to go to the eye properties and within this part, we don't have a part number, so I'll type in my classic standby, XC100, the description of test part. And it should work if I hit apply here. Oh, sometimes it doesn't. You have to actually close out of the box. That it, uh, as I make changes to it, I may get an update in the thing. Otherwise, it should update when I pop out, it looks like. So then, and uh, the vendor is Master Graphics. Who am I work for? <laughs> so I go ahead and hit apply, hit close, and now my dial indicator for the modeling goes to full green as well. So that's Design Checker in a nutshell. It's a nice way to set up some pre-existing standards. Uh, we looked at the, the holes being inaccessible, we looked at the hole depth to diameter ratio, and we also looked at specifying some properties. You could also create your own checks with iLogic and then you could implement those iLogic rules. And so again, hopefully this introduction helps you understand a little bit about what the design checker is, how to get it, how to use it. But if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to leave a comment or reach out. Again, hope this helps and have a blessed day.